The Book of Clarence is another blasphemous movie about Jesus Christ. Clarence is him. Jesus of Nazareth. You can't even buy power like that. I want to be like that in 10 years. I want to be like that now. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly, without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K-Dub. Today, we're going to talk about the book of Clarence. It is a new movie that has come out. Have you heard about this film? Well, we're going to look at the trailer. We're going to give our give us some uh, thoughts, some responses. Man, uh, it tis is the season for blasphemy, I guess, right? I mean, you got Lil Nas X, you got all these people trying to their best to make all these blasphemies, right? So let's look at this trailer and let's talk about it. Clarence, I'm not a man without faults. I played the cards I was dealt. Clarence. Oh, let, let me just say this because I read the lyrics to the, uh, the the theme song of this movie. It's by Lil Wayne. It's called Hallelujah. My goodness. Blasphemies after blasphemy, which, okay, that's to be expected, but it just shows more and more how this film is... Uh, being blasphemous of jesus christ and don't worry we'll look at what the director has to say about this film as well so let's let's continue with this review in spite of your selfish ways there's a beautiful soul in there somewhere bad anthropology clarence is him jesus of nazareth you can't so uh clarence meets jesus right so let's see what his first impression of jesus is once he meets him. To even buy power like that. I want to be like that in 10 years. I want to be like that now. So, right, he wants to, he wants to be like Jesus after he, he sees kind of his, um, his uh, majesticness, his uh, popularity, uh, even his uh, miracles. And we're going to see kind of how this kind of comes about. But one thing that reminded me of this when I saw this uh, uh, trailer was Simon the Sorcerer. Don't worry. We'll speak about that more in a second. But just keep that in mind. Simon the Sorcerer. Knowledge is stronger than belief. And if you can see that right there, you have Sean Carter, a.k.a. Jay-Z, as one of the producers, which just lets you know how blasphemous this is, right? He, he has no respect for Christ, right? Even calling himself Je 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 Jehovah, right? Uh, so just interesting, interesting stuff. Clarence, he made the miracles. I have a plan. I can see! I can see! So you have uh, the the man right there that gets healed, saying, "Hey, you need you you need you need miracles, right? How are you gonna you know uh, get some credibility if you don't have miracles?" Well, and then Clarence responds back, "I have a plan," and so they have him kind of do this miracle, right, where he pretends to be blind. Uh, it's, it's a fake miracle right here, right? So, but this is how he gets his his start, doing a fake miracle uh, that the trailer depicts uh, to gain. Uh, popularity. God sent me to deliver his message. I am your new Messiah. And so Clarence gains an audience. Look, look now. At first, he didn't have an audience, right? And now he has thousands listen to him. And what does he claim to be the new, new Messiah? Right? To be a new Messiah. Um, <laughs> right. Interesting. I I, I am uh, thinking of Matthew 24. We'll get to that in a second. Blasphemous wine! Ah, stop that! Your God is a myth. See for yourselves. There is no Messiah. 
Clarence, if you'll be so kind to walk on water. And so Clarence is depicting here as walking on water, right? Imitating all Christ's uh, miracles or many of Christ's miracles, right? He, he's a, he, he's a, uh, he's a copycat, right? Of Jesus of Nazareth, right? Damn. Yeah, so that movie is now out in theaters as of two days ago. And I want to check out some quotes from USA Today's article about this uh, film. Uh, it, it depicts this movie as a, uh, right, a different sort of Bible story with this title character turning false prophet in the time of Jesus Christ to make a book. However, writer-director uh, James Samuel turned serious by the end of it, reimagining the crucifixion and resurrection with modern uh resonance right uh you know so it, it's it's this modern take or you know a lot of people want to modernize the bible and modernize all this stuff right uh going on it says said in ad 33 the movie a black perspective on the biblical epic genre <laughs> right we don't need a black perspective we need a biblical perspective right already shows you where it's going off anyway um but Clarence in the movie is a we we dealing Jerusalem man who sees the way people treat Jesus and his apostles and wants the same respect. So a lot of enviness, right? He proclaims himself as the new Messiah um, and stages Jesus miracles with his friend Elijah and takes money from the public. Uh, Clarence began to do some good, like freeing black uh, freeing slaves, uh, but he's arrested by Pontius Pilate, who's after false messiahs like jesus well if you actually read the bible Pilate isn't actually after false messiahs he's kind of just indifferent to him <laughs> and then he's his hand is forced by uh the jews but anyways not to <laughs> get into a tangent here much to clarence's own surprise he doesn't sink when the roman governor orders him to walk across water and Pilate is forced to crucify him so right just this copycat right uh though clarence uh recreates Jesus carrying of the cross and crucifixion with brutal effectiveness. Clarence struggled to get up the hill with the cross as onlookers throw things and Roman soldiers whip him. And at one point, his mother uh, shouts, they always take our babies. Right. You already know what this is coming from. Right. This this modern perspective of black people are being gunned down by the uh, authorities. Right. Uh, let's, let's read this. I thought this was interesting. The burden. Clarence carries in the scene is the cross that we all bear. There's a thing that we feel growing up in our hoods and surroundings and our parents feel that uh, they always take our babies. Well, there's a lot of black. It's actually more probable you will die by the hands of another black person. But you know what I'm saying? There's a lot that has changed, but a lot has. Um, it was a truth that I had to tell, the filmmaker said, uh, speaking of Mr. Samuel, he says, along with the laughs and the smiles, the joy and laughter, there was also the pain that you don't see coming until the day it happens. But it's always hovering over us. The image of a black man treading towards the crucifix crucifixion shakes us out of the uh, this kind of uh, sa sa sanitized version of that. Um, he says, we're used to the iconoph iconog iconography of a white, sometimes blonde blue-eyed jesus with the cross having it so f far outside of what we have previously uh, seen mean you're suddenly able to engage with that in a different way you know here's my perspective i don't think we should be trying to re re uh, uh, depict jesus as any image white black brown chinese i i, I don't care i don't want to see any images of these I, that, that's my perspective on this uh but i, I just think it's interesting uh what, what the what the uh director had to say there well obviously he's going around doing his interviews and i thought this was interesting so we're going to take a look at what the director had to say in a inter recent interview i would say this matthew 24 5 jesus says Man oh so people are accusing him of um hey this film is very blasphemous <laughs> right <laughs> obviously right you don't have to be a biblical scholar to see yeah, someone claiming to be the new Messiah and trying to depict himself as the Christ. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's literally blasphemy. And so he comes on here. They, they I guess he's asked this question. Uh, of course, it's in Atlanta. You should have known. Atlanta must be stopped. But uh, he's asked this question, and this is his response. I would say this. Matthew 24, 5. Jesus says, many will come and say they are the Christ. 
and they would lead many astray. Jesus said that himself. It only takes a Google search to see that in Jesus' 33 years of life, there was two to three hundred people in his lifetime saying they are the Messiah. The Bible speaks of Simon the Sorcerer. Like, does anyone actually read the book they profess to know so much about? Yeah, but Clarence is depicted as this hero. Obviously, as though texts you read are a negative thing. So, uh, you know, I left there listening like, so you're admitting Clarence is a false prophet to black people? Like, you know, you think of Simon the Sorcerer. Yeah, he was told that he may he perish, right, for, for, design, for desiring to buy the power of God with money, right? Yeah, Simon the Sorcerer is not a hero. These false Christs and false prophets that lead people astray are not heroes. So, but Clarence is depicted as a hero. So, I... To, to make this correlate on this parallel, even uh, par yeah, the parallel, it's this correlation in a parallel uh, doesn't follow. So he's he's berating us. Well, does anybody read the Bible? I know he has the London, UK accent and we're supposed to be a little more intelligent, right? Than us, <laughs> a little heathen Americans, right? But the parallel that he just presented doesn't follow from what he's trying to depict in the film, right? This black person who 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 rises out of the bottom and at the top right and we're we're greater than who they say we are right um it, it doesn't follow sir sorry i i really need to know ask your listeners what currency did they use in the bible days what currency did they use you see people with, with a dumbfounded face yeah i have a dumbfounded face because what does that have to do with anything about the movie or wh what does that have to do with the question at hand yeah, we got a dumbfounded face because that was a dumbfounded. <laughs> I, I found that answer dumb, <laughs> you know. Jesus himself spoke about this. Clarence is a, the book of Clarence is the story of an everyman, mm -hmm. a man that was a disbeliever who goes on a journey of self-discovery. But what does he discover himself as a messiah? As a matter of fact, he says he's the new messiah. So. Yeah, what he self-discovers him as, himself as is what we would call biblically a false Christ, a false prophet. But you're making that a like a good thing, a hero, someone we should champion. Uh, matter of fact, we're, we're, I mean, the crucifixion is something we need to look at from a black perspective, according to the article there. And redemption and finds faith. He finds faith. He finds faith by trying to to be the, a messiah. Like, like, you see how much he has to like, <laughs> how much cartwheels and backflips he has to do to try to make this actually orthodox and biblical. The the film is not biblical, you know. It, it's not for a person to say this film is blasphemy. They haven't watched the film, and if you watch the film, it's L let me just say this: you don't have to watch the film. Go watch what you say about the film. Go watch the trailer. It's very clear that. Clarence is trying to be depicted as a as a, as a messiah. Um, and right, we're supposed to be looking at this from a black modern perspective. Look, look, look. No, we don't. You know, the biblical perspective is just fine enough. Say this film is blasphemy. I have to ask you. I have to ask you why. Is it because the people in the film are depicted of color? Jesus was the first superhero. Uh, and I'll, I'll say it. I don't care if they were Chinese. I don't care what color they are. Unbiblical is unbiblical. And Jesus Christ was not the first superhero. Superheroes are not rooted in historical uh, times. Superheroes, they have, uh, you know, kryptonites. <laughs> they got weaknesses. No, Jesus Christ is not a mere superhero. My, my hand on my heart. He's God. Because I'm not being delivered the, the films that I want to see. And Jesus depicted in the right way. I had to do it myself. So I would say, you're welcome. <laughs> well, no thank you, sir. You can keep your, uh, your congratulatory uh, you know, statements to yourself because I'm not, I'm not giving you kudos for making a blasphemous film, a, a, it, you know, a, a, a movie with bad theology. So, hey, you want to see a movie with black people in it? I mean, I don't, that's not the biggest issue about the film. <laughs> that's not the biggest issue with the movie itself. I don't care if they're, again, I don't care if they're black. I don't care if they're white. 
that's not the issue and that's not an issue I raise. Now, I have an issue of you looking at into that and kind of, uh, you know, narrating the black ex- experience and perspective into mo- a movie. I would have a problem with that from a white perspective or Asian perspective. You know, you have to you have to weave in these cultural experiences of today and say, well, that's must have been happening 2000 years ago. That's silly and asinine. Right. And so, uh, hey, I watch the film, I guess. But, hey, we are to examine things from a biblical perspective, uh, not our uh, ethnic uh, standpoint, epistemic, you know, framework. You know, that's a big word right there. Big, you know, <laughs> you know, ten dollar word right there, which it just means from from our from our standpoint, right, our vantage point from how black people see the world. And even that is kind of sh- strange because black people are not a monolith. Not every black person is the same. So, you know, they out here shooting our babies doesn't apply to every black person. Matter of fact. It doesn't apply to most black people. So you're, you're presenting this narrative that is not even true for the whole. So I thought I would look to that. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, till the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.